Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and it's 100 miles up on the Pegasus 36 Shield. So I grabbed this utility shoe from Nike back in October time, I think it was, and I finally got round to that sort of 100 mile mark where I like to do my kind of secondary reviews on the shoes. Really picked it up for those cold, wintry conditions of which there's been not that many, but there's been lots and lots of wet conditions recently. A couple of storms have hit the UK and it's given me a good opportunity to take these out and test their metal. So I've undertaken a vast array of different types of activities in these shoes. Some faster paced stuff, middle of the road, and then some sort of slower recovery paces to mixed results. So with the Pegasus 36 Shield, I'm gonna start with the upper. How's it holding up over the 100 miles? It's absolutely caked in dirt and mud and kind of gunk. I've really put this one through its paces the last week. Bit of a torture test really for it in the very wet conditions. There's lots of standing water everywhere on the trail I've run. A couple of viewers actually have said, you know, how do you get the shoes that dirty? Well, I use them. I can't stand those reviews where people don't actually wear the shoes. They just go, yeah, this one's great for this and come and buy it from our store. Just, just no. I found the upper of the shoe did give after about 20 miles. Initially, when I first put it on out the box, I thought, oh dear, this one's gonna be a little tight. It did feel a little constrictive, but the upper has given, and now I can use a variety of different socks in there, and it just feels a bit like a glove. Certainly don't expect the same kind of feel as the standard Pegasus 36 straight out the box. You won't get it. This one is gonna be a little tighter. You're gonna to have to work with it a little while. It was much tighter in the toe box initially. That was kind of my main concern. But as I say, that's given as the miles have kind of totted up, it's become a much, much more comfortable shoe. The kind of rear section here of the shoe is very, very similar to the Pegasus 36. There's not a huge amount in it there, really. I think they're quite, quite similar. But in terms of the rest of the upper, it's totally different. That neoprene section of the shoe and the tongue did provide me with a few little issues. Certainly in the heel, I've felt the shoe's always been a good fit. It hasn't produced any slipping or anything like that. Although I have found lockdown to be a little hit and miss with this lacing system here. And that does worry me a little bit with the Pegasus 37 coming up. That's going to use a very similar system. You do have to sort of cinch the laces up quite far and you do get some bunching uh, through the tongue here when you do cinch the laces up. I hope, really, really hope that that's not going to be a problem with the Pegasus 37. Those loops here where the laces go through, they seem like a great idea. But in practice, actually, I've found that sometimes lockdown can be a little bit uneven. Tension can be a bit uneven. There have been a few runs where I've had to stop briefly and readjust the shoe. It seems to be the left shoe. I think that's probably my foot that's slightly smaller maybe than the right. I did experience a little bit of discomfort in the left shoe, just sort of right around this area here, just above the toe box um, where the first lace loops are. Not really sure what that is. It sort of seems to come and go. It's kind of where the neoprene section sort of meets the lace loops. I don't know what that is. I haven't been able to isolate it. Just something to bear in mind. I'm still not 100% sure about that. If I do figure out what it is, I shall let you know. Other than that, I found the upper to be very good actually in wet weather, unless you're going out in serious wet weather. Where you've got standing water and stuff like that, no problem at all. This shoe will handle it. It will kind of chew it up and spit it out. Water tends to get into the shoe, but um, it vents quite quickly through this sort of neoprene section. One time when I did take the shoe out in extremely wet weather, there was a big storm, loads of water sort of flooded actually part of the trail area. And this shoe just basically became like a large bucket. When I got back home, I could literally empty it out and there was just tons and tons of water in there. But on some wet conditions, you won't have a problem if you're just sort of running through some very wet paths, trails, that type of thing, uh, you'll be absolutely fine with this. It does provide some decent repellency to water. So I've run over about 600 miles in the Pegasus 35, so the previous version to this, and I'm pretty sure that something slightly different in the midsole and outsole of this shoe. Well, certainly in the outsole, if I just show you here, you've got a very different kind of outsole pattern. It does look similar when you first see it, but the outsole pattern's very different. This is Nike Storm Tread, sort of wet traction outsole, and I found it to be fantastic, actually. The outsole's got an entirely different feeling to it than the Pegasus 36 standard version. It does feel to me like it's got a little bit less punch. The Zoom Air unit within the midsole 
doesn't seem to react the same way as it does in the Pegasus 35 standard version. I found the outsole great in all sorts of different conditions. Uh, I've never felt like it's slipping whatsoever on anything through mud, grass. I've treated it a bit like a trail shoe, I guess. One big issue though with the outsole is it does collect stones and debris. It's like a magnet for it. You can see some of the stones here. This is just from today's run. I actually went through early and kind of picked them all out with a, uh, with a toothpick. But it's already collected loads more stuff here. You can see there's loads of stones wedged in there. They kind of collect stuff like a magpie. You may notice here I've put some different insoles into these shoes. I really didn't get on with the standard insoles that came with the shoes out the box. Main reason being, they're not kind of like a mirror. This one's drastically different to this one and you could actually feel it inside the shoe when I first put them on. So yeah, I kind of had to just bin these. There's a slight weight difference between the 36 and the 36 Shield. I'll throw that up onto the screen for you to have a look at. And I've certainly found this one a little bit less versatile than the standard version. That outsole just doesn't seem to have the same kind of bounce back feeling that I get from the 36. Certainly less versatile in terms of range of paces than the standard version. It's a little less flexible, it's a little more rigid. The shoe's been a dependable utility though on wet roads, pavement and light trails. As I mentioned earlier, I absolutely saturated it around Christmas time and it eventually dried out, it took a while. That inner heel area, there's a lot of sponge there and that was kind of holding on to the water for quite a while. The rest of the upper is pretty water repellent though. The neoprene lets in some water, but it also kind of vents it a little bit as well. Though, as I said, if water does get inside the shoe, don't expect miracles. That original windsole is exactly the same as the standard Pegasus 36 edition. It just sort of soaks up water like a sponge. Those insoles that I put in from the Nike Zoom Fly actually worked a hell of a lot better. They're a little thinner and they didn't have the same kind of problem and made the shoe kind of a little bit of a better fit for me. I gotta say guys, one major issue over 100 miles with this shoe has gotta be the odor. At 100 miles, I have to say it's quite pungent and a little off-putting. If someone's gonna ask me to sniff this shoe or Beast's Breath, I think I'd actually go for Beast. Imagine, you know, like a mackerel trawler that's never been washed. I could try and wash these, but I'm unsure at present whether that's going to make any difference at all, really. Just seems to be sort of ingrained into the shoe. Alas, with a partially water repellent upper, this is the effect of less breathability of the kind of materials used in the shoe. I'm not sure if water's managed to get into sort of the top of the midsole or something, but it really isn't a great smell. Recently, I've utilised this shoe to go up to sort of my tempo run kind of pace, around about 7 minutes 30 per mile. I think it's about 4 minutes 40 per kilometre. And I've really enjoyed it, in fairness. It's protected my feet, kept them nice and warm and toasty on some very cold runs. In particular, I remember last weekend when Storm Dennis hit us here in the UK. There were some kids out training on the kind of back field there, and I utilised these just for some easy miles, and my feet felt nice and warm and protected, and traction's really great. If you are looking for a reasonably priced sort of shoe you can utilise for those type of conditions with some great traction, then this could be one you could look at. So, would I buy the Pegasus 36 Shield again? Will I keep running in it? Well, yes, I'm going to keep utilising it. You know, winter's not over yet. I'm not really that bothered about running particularly fast-paced miles in this shoe. That wasn't really my initial intention when I purchased it. Would I buy it again? That's probably a no. It's kind of quite an unremarkable shoe, really. I think even if I got a different colourway, I don't think my thoughts about it would be any different. But those weird kind of lacing issues, kind of having to mess around sometimes to get a reasonable lockdown. The only mildly successful water repellency and the odour, I think that'll probably lead me to try out some other options. I found this shoe relatively true to size. I went for a UK size 11, which is a US size 12. Though some of you may want to opt in going up half a size, I did find it a little bit restrictive around the toe box area. If you have any comments at all or questions on the Nike Pegasus 36 Shield, please post them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. A quick musical interlude. So I pulled this one out again, The War on Drugs, Lost in a Dream. Fantastic album. Many, many moons ago, I had the opportunity to play 
with the war on drugs, but unfortunately we had to cancel the gig. Man, that would have been cool. That was when the war on drugs was Adam Grand Seal and Kurt Vile. This is a great album. I always love a good, you know, huge photo inside. Under pressure, an ocean in between the waves. Ah, Ice to the Wind. Ice to the Wind is a fantastic track. Some good driving beats on some of these tunes and some more mellow kind of numbers as well. Do check it out. The War on Drugs, Lost in the Dream. I'm off to clean these now. I think they're in need of some uh, tender loving care. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. It's much appreciated. Please click the subscribe button down here and hit the bell for notifications. Give the video a thumbs up like and make sure you comment below and share it with your friends. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you. Recommendation from my good buddy Kafuzi. I was in the market for a running pack so I have got this Osprey Daylight Plus. I'm very keen to get out there and utilise it. Hopefully the rain will stay with us just for a little bit longer. £25 as well, you can't moan at that.